Lions fans, welcome to the Malloy Volleyball Preview. I'm Mercury Seto here with the head coach of the Malloy Volleyball Program, Billy Correo. Now, coach, going into this season, a couple things changing for you um, personally as well as on the volleyball court. How are you adjusting your life as being a volleyball coach and a brand new father? Um, there's a lot less sleep, um, considering there was very little sleep to begin with. Um, certainly the schedule is a little bit different, but we were able to actually change practices around, um, you know, to, at the girls' request. So we'll be practicing in the afternoon, which will be nice and, uh, you know, should sync up pretty well with my son's sleep schedule. So I'm looking forward to that. And for you personally as well, you know, you're going into yet another season here, inching closer to becoming the coach with the most wins in the history of this program. I mean, I know we talked, we're going to talk about the last season sure. a little bit, yeah. but at the same time, for you to have that as a mantelpiece for you, you know, again, the sum will look at that and say, hey, you have the most wins in Malloy history, so that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, that would be, that would be pretty cool. Um, you know, you look in the record books and the, the bar isn't terribly high, but it will be exciting to have that um, title on, on my mantle. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I am looking forward to that, and you know, if we get there, hopefully it's just one of many accomplishments we achieved this season. Right. And we'll talk a little bit about last season. It was a bit of a struggle for your team, but um, you lost your main senior, who was a four-year player, who you've talked about extensively with me, sure. on and off the camera, and Cassie yep. Palmer. What was her impact on this program, and what really does her loss mean for you and for the program as a whole? Yeah, I think, you know, Cassie not being a part of this team, um, you know, from a personnel standpoint, obviously, you know, to lose her ball control, to lose her, um, you know, lose her as a weapon from the service line, uh, and to lose her offensive uh, output as well, you know, is a tremendous loss. But I do think, and this is something that I spoke about at the, um, you know, athletic banquet at the end of the year, she kind of opened the door for other out-of-state athletes to join our program. So while you know she's not a, a member of the roster this year, she is certainly a member of the program, and um, you know her impact will be felt for years to come. Talking about the players that are coming back, a lot of maturity now that's turning from freshmen to sophomores and sophomores to juniors as well. And the players that you have coming back, Jeannie Reynas, Carly Banks, who are the two players who replaced the two up on the banners here inside the gymnasium along with Dakota O'Neill as your libero and Megan Carr. Talk about those players a little bit and, and what they mean to have them back again for another season here and to kind of lead the new crop that you have coming in. Yeah, the, the six players that we have returning from last year, um, you know, they've, they've done a tremendous job uh, in, the, in the spring season. They put a lot of work in, um, have grown in leaps and bounds, have you know, improved tremendously. Um, and I think their, their leadership really shined um, in the spring season as well with the amount of roster turnover that we've had. Um, they showed a ton of character in their willingness and, and ability to step up and lead. Um, you know, Carly and Jeannie in particular as only sophomores, they really did a great job of leading. Um, and then I'm looking forward to, to Dakota and Danny stepping up as, um, you know, the senior and junior leadership on this team and the only um, senior and junior. So we will be very young, but I think that the two upperclassmen that we have will have a tremendous impact. You mentioned Danielle Williams a little bit and her and Valerie Wills are the other two players we talked about who didn't play as much last year for various reasons but are now back. Val has the height, Danielle's a lefty. How much more does that make your offense in terms of dimensional and terms of the looks that you can kind of provide? Yeah, the ability to have Danielle Williams back for another season is a uh, you know, it's immeasurable, really. Um, you know, to lose her last year and to lose what she brings offensively was, was a pretty big blow. Um, so to be able to get another year with her, um, I think is big for her, it's big for us as a program, and she will have a, a really big impact on what we're able to do. Um, you know, and, and Val grew a lot last year. Unfortunately, she wasn't, you know, able to even practice with the team towards the end of the season. Um, but she's come a long way and still has a ton of potential to tap into. So, you know, she will certainly get some minutes this year. And, um, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing what she can do. 
Before we talk about the freshmen that are coming in, there's one thing that I want to talk to you about or ask you about with the schedule-wise as well. Because, I guess it's the Danny Longo too with the kind of soccer preview. Losing down from the schedule as a conference opponent, as just somebody that you would play twice in the season, I'm sure the relationships you had with those coaches and, and seeing those players play. What blow is that for the conference and for you? I mean, it, some people say it's just a loss on the schedule, but I'm sure there's more to it than just that. Yeah, it's, it's definitely more than just a loss on the schedule. Um, you know, I, I feel like I had a pretty special relationship um, with Dallin College and their coaching staff and their players, um, you know, for the last six years since I've been here and even before when I was at Adelphi, I've always had a pretty close relationship with all of their coaches and, and a handful of their players. So, you know, to see them deal with what, what they had to deal with was tough. Um, but to have that rivalry, for lack of a better word, was always fun. You know, we, in my tenure here, we were unable to beat them. Um, but our girls always brought their A game when we played them. I mean, senior night, for that to be our last match, match against Dowling was pretty special. To take them to five sets, um, you know, on a pretty memorable night for Cassie Palmer. Uh, you know, it was a pretty cool experience. And again, for that to be our last match against them will be memorable. Um, but to not be able to play them anymore going forward, um, you know, it's going to hurt us as a, as a school. It's going to hurt us as a conference. And I think also as a region, uh, certainly a blow to the, uh, to the East region in terms of strength of schedule. With the freshmen that are coming in now as we transition over to that, one setter in Sophia Smith, mm -hmm. so it looks as if you're running a 5-1 on the offense, and that could change depending on how. Not going to change. Not, not going to change. change. There we go. <laughs> it's a 5-1. Yep. And I think for me, because I saw the scrimmage against Goldie Beacon you guys had, it was a very funky one-up. And more volatile, let's talk about this. Her back setting was fantastic, but the, the outside setting had its difficulties. So how do you kind of work with her on perfecting both of them? Because the back sets, like I said, they were, they were the best I've seen in a long time. Yeah, I mean, any setter is gonna have issues uh, adjusting to the level of college play. I don't think Sophia is gonna have a hard time adjusting. She played at a very high level um, during the club season. So, you know, it's just a matter of making her her location consistent, and, and the biggest thing is going to have um, her tempo becoming more consistent, which, you know, even today we worked on a lot, and, and there was already some tremendous improvement. Um, but really, you know, with any setter, their struggle is consistency, um, you know, because you're setting to different hitters, you're setting to different um, levels of athleticism, different height, um, you know, and then you're looking to, to locate a ball consistently in, in one spot over and over and over again. Um, but I don't think, I don't foresee that being an issue going forward, especially, as I said, running a 5-1 and Sophia getting, you know, the, the lion's share of reps from the setting position. We talked about Sophia, let's bring in a few of the other freshmen. A lot of players from this local area who are going to add a different dimension because it was California related, now it's more New York related, but all the players that you have here, Haley Ware, Shannon Wren, Devin Hagerstrom, Tara Carlin, Francesca Castellano, just those names. What are you seeing from them in the practices and how are they kind of shaping the look of this team going forward? The first nine days of preseason have been awesome. Uh, the energy is really good, really positive. The girls are doing a good job of playing together, um, figuring out how to play alongside each other, which is probably one of the most important aspects of volleyball just that communication and, you know, understanding what the girl next to you is, is capable of doing and, you know, what she usually does um, out of habit or out of instinct. So their ability to kind of figure out each other pretty quickly has been impressive. Um, you know, having, as you said, that local contingent in this freshman class has been, has been fun and I think it's gonna add, um, you know, a pretty, exciting atmosphere to our home matches you know hopefully we'll see uh, a lot more family and friends at our home matches to fill the stands so i think that'll be another exciting part of, of what we're doing going into this season um, but like i said the first nine days have been great you know there's a lot of learning a lot of teaching and you know as a coaching staff we talked about um, at our preseason meeting just the idea that we're going to have to be patient because a lot of mistakes that we'll see early on will be just lack of knowledge more than 
you know, lack of effort or lack of focus. So we have been very um, aware of that as we got into the season. And that brings also Jess Fischetti into the fold, too, sure. because now you've got three defensive specialist types in Liberos who are relatively good back row players for you. Towards the end of last season, you had six or seven players due to injuries and other things who were there. You have 14 on your roster now. Do you look at that depth, and does that make you excited for what's coming forward? Because, as you know, and we hate to say this, not know that injuries are part of the game, sure. unfortunately, but with a 14-person roster, you've got to feel pretty good about your chances. Yeah, we, I'm, and I think this is something that I've seen over the last six years, just the ability to look down the bench and, and have 14 women and you know eight on the bench, and any one of them could step in in any position and, and contribute, and there's not really a a dip in the talent level. So from top to bottom, we're pretty consistent. Um, you know, everybody brings something special to the table. So in that regard, um, you know, each component's going to be important. But you're right, the depth is certainly an asset that, you know, if, if there are injuries, so be it. And then if someone's not performing, then it kind of takes the pressure off and you don't have to feel like you're carrying the weight of the world and someone else will step in and get the job done for you. Last year, your barometer starting point was the Cal State LA Invitational, where you went out to Los Angeles, played four matches, kind of saw where your team was. Now you're part of this Long Island Invitational where you're hosting two teams on two separate days, starting on Friday, next Friday, September the 2nd, and then Saturday, September the 3rd, you've got Southern Connecticut, Chestnut Hill, Lemoyne, and Post coming in. Yeah. You're looking at four teams that are regional games too, and teams that are from different conferences but that are close by. So how does that direct kind of what you work on in practice and how does that shape how you look at this season starting off here at home? Well, I think this will be a much more accurate barometer of where we are. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Cal State LA, we went out there um, to play top level competition. Um, you know, I think three of the four teams had weeks where they were in the top 25 in the country. Um, you know, so we went out there to compete, knowing what we were walking into. Um, and I think the girls showed some, some metal while we were out there. So this year, again, it's a different, a different vibe going into opening weekend. You know, these matches um, could potentially be impactful right. on the end of the season. Um, so we're going in here looking for wins. Right. Um, knowing what the opponents or knowing who the opponents are and what they're capable of and you know playing at a level that we should be playing at right. so you know where we don't have that kind of warm-up weekend at Cal State LA um, you know there is a much uh, greater urgency in the preseason to get ourselves into game shape um, for that first weekend next weekend I'm curious to ask you about this too because you have two other dates where there are tri matches mm -hmm. as well one at George and Court in Lakewood New Jersey and one here where you're playing St. Rose and the team that represented the East region in the NCAA Elite Eight last year in NYIT now they lost one of their bigger players in Orlando Cass who changed the St. Cloud State they still have Kai Motorola and a few other big pieces so they seem to be the team that everyone's going to pick to win sure. the, the conference, if not the region. Bridgeport as well, LIU Post, again, right. you have a very strong conference. What do the tri-matches do to help you, or, or how can they enhance kind of what you're doing just playing two games in one day? How does the fatigue factor kind of play in as well? Um, well, it's, you know, the fatigue factor is, is very real, um, you know, and that's one of the reasons why we'll play NYIT first and then St. Rose um, to make sure that when we do play NYIT that it's on a level playing field right. that both of us are playing the first match. Um, but, you know, everybody's playing under the same circumstances. Um, you know, when Tech plays St. Rose, they'll be playing obviously St. Rose in their first match. So, um, you know, maybe there's a leg up there, but you just have to approach it like one match. Um, Again, with the depth of the 14-woman roster, hopefully that comes in handy then. Um, but at the same time, if we're running seven, eight, nine players out there, hopefully those nine are getting the job done from one match to the next. Right. Last question. We talked a little bit about it. I'm just going to reiterate it. It's a very tough conference for this year sure. as well. NYIT, Bridgeport, LA Post, Queens, Mercy. These are teams that you know of very well. Right. And even you're playing at Delphi this year, and they've had a very strong season. What is your vision for how this season kind of shakes out? Or if you have any predictions, bold or otherwise, <laughs> if you have anything, 
what do you kind of foresee going forward for the season and how, how do you think it'll end up? Um, well, like you mentioned, we're very young. Um, eight freshmen, four sophomores, a junior and a senior. Um, so we're going to have to kind of learn along the way and, and figure out what our identity is. Um, but I expect us to be competitive. You know, I expect us to, to battle every team. You know, one of the benefits of being young is they're going to step on the court and not understand that NYIT was in the Elite Eight last year, that, you know, Adelphi win the NE10, you know, the last three or four years. or You know, so they're not going to really have any true um, idea of who the competition is. They'll just step on the court and they'll, they'll be playing to win. Um, you know, so in terms of predictions, I predict we'll be very competitive. Um, and that's what I'm hoping for. And if we're in the mix at the end of the season, then you know, hopefully we can kind of dial it up a little bit more and, and go go do something special this year. And certainly, back to get more sleep and breaking the wins record for you this season coming forward. Uh, more sleep, probably not. Um, <laughs> breaking the wins record, uh, Rick. If, if I don't break that wins record. I'm in for a long season. Oh my goodness. Well, I'll, I'll be in for one as well. No, but we're looking forward to it again September 2nd, the first home game for the part of the Long Island Invitational, the tri match on that day here at Cleveland Gymnasium. Mount Sports and Malloy Lions, Billy Guerrero, the head coach of the Lions volleyball program. As always, thanks for the time. Best luck to you as the season goes forward. Thanks, Rick.